What's up guys, TechLab here and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit more fun. For those of you that regularly follow the channel you will remember this laptop. It was in a recent video that we did where we took two laptops that were being thrown away and we managed to use both of them to build just one and we managed to save this laptop. We tried to do a little bit of gaming on it and we managed to get Half-Life 2 just about running but apart from that it's not actually really good for much. It is an old spec Dell laptop and it works perfectly fine particularly for Windows but when it comes to gaming obviously we're not going to get any kind of performance out of it but after a little bit of inspiration from our community we decided to turn it into a bit of a retro emulation games console. For those of you that didn't watch our last video, this was a laptop that we actually saved. It was going to go into the bin with another laptop and the other laptop was actually in much worse condition. This one was pretty good, it had a working screen, the system generally worked but it needed a new battery, a new plug, a lot of new screws and things like that and we managed to salvage all of that from the other one. It is a pretty old unit now and it's currently running a first generation i3 mobile processor. After we managed to repair it we managed to get Windows 10 running and it runs perfectly fine. It's a little bit slow and that's due to the memory and obviously the processor and we did try to get some games running on it but we weren't that successful. We managed to get Half-Life 2 running and you could actually play the game probably all the way through but it wasn't a great experience. So it got me thinking what could we actually do with this unit i don't like to throw anything away particularly when it's working and we've managed to get it fixed so i decided to actually build it into a retro emulation console and that's going to be great because it means that it's completely portable now i do have a selection of old retro consoles but they are showing their age they're starting to get a bit of wear and tear on them and i don't like to use them particularly because one day they're going to completely wear out so this machine was going to actually give me the ability to play my favorite retro games and I can then keep my consoles and the games in storage in perfect condition. But to do that we do need a few things. The first thing obviously is the laptop and we've got that here. The second thing is a USB stick and the third thing is a piece of software. Now you can actually get software that will run or emulation software that will run on the actual OS itself so that's Windows 10 and it will work perfectly fine but we want to build this system completely as a dedicated emulated system so we're going to go for an operating system that will actually allow us to play those retro games. Now before we actually get into the installation of the emulation software we've got a few little surprises for this laptop. We've decided to give it a bit of an upgrade and finish off some of the details that were missing as well. Of course from the last video it was missing a hard drive and we managed to use one of our SSDs to get it up and running but we needed something a little bit bigger so we decided to purchase one of these. Now this is a SATA SSD. It is from a company called Silicon Power and these are actually super cheap at the moment. This was less than £25 and it is a 500 gig SSD and it works perfectly fine so we're going to be installing that. As far as CPU goes in this machine there is an i3 350M. Now that's not a brilliant CPU but the beauty of having old machines like this particularly was they're easy to upgrade and the parts are super cheap. For the CPU upgrade we've decided to go for this. Now this is an i5 processor, it's the i5-540M. It will give us a little bit more of a boost of power over the i3 although you probably want to aim for something like an i7 when you go for this but unfortunately they are pretty expensive. We managed to get this for about £8. Now that's not too bad considering the uplift that it's going to give us. Memory was actually one of the worst things in this system. It was currently running two one gigabyte sticks of DDR3 and we've managed to pick up the full capacity of the machine which is two four gigabytes. So we're going to be boosting this machine from two gigabytes of DDR3 all the way up to eight gigabytes of DDR3. Now that's going to help obviously with loading times and particularly a lot of the emulation or well, even though the processors have pretty much got the same iGPU so we're only going to be able to take it so far. In terms of emulation we'll probably be able to get lots of the older systems on there but when you start getting to things like the more modern consoles like the PS3 and the Xbox 360 we're probably still quite limited there. So if you are going to be doing something like this you will need something a little bit more powerful to get all of that emulation working. Last but not least we have actually bought a replacement little thumb pad for the middle of the laptop. Now this laptop was missing or originally missing the little thumbstick here. It is absolutely not needed and you don't need to actually replace them. You can just use the standard mouse pad on there but I managed to pick this up pretty cheap and I thought it would actually finish off the system perfectly and particularly we'll have a complete system. So the first thing we need to do is obviously get those upgrades done. Now as I said before these machines are actually pretty easy to upgrade particularly the older models. We've even got a bunch of old screws that we're missing and we managed to pinch them out of the other laptop before we uh, 
recycle the rest of it. So we'll just dig straight in and we'll get things sorted. The first thing obviously is going to be the hard drive. We'll need to take that bay out here. And then when it comes to things like the memory, which is easy enough to take out, we just pull those little springs yank the memory out we'll get rid of that and then we come to the cpu now to get the cpu out and we've also got a chipset here that's being called we'll need to unscrew all of this this is the heat sink so hopefully it will come out pretty quickly and we can just undo all of these screws and hopefully the heat sink will come off now the cpus in these older laptops generally are changeable and obviously as is because we managed to buy a new one so we'll just take this heatsink off and then we'll see what's underneath. Now that we've got the heatsink loose, it does appear that we need to get rid of this fan for a moment. So we'll take the fan out and then we should be able to slide that heatsink out, give it a bit of a clean up and we'll be able to put some new thermal paste and all that kind of stuff on it. So it's always good to do this anyway, because it means we're going to be able to clean and filtrate the system out so that we can get better cooling. And that's as far as the fan goes. The fan on this is actually pretty clean. So there's probably a lot of dust in this little vent system here. We'll try and get that out though. And that should just slide out just like that. Again, the vent system on this is actually pretty clean. There's not really any kind of issues with it, but we'll brush it out with a brush. When we flip it over, we can see that the thermal paste is actually rock solid. So we'll need to clean that off. Probably don't really need to clean the CPU off because we're not going to be reusing that again. So we'll get some alcoholic solution and we'll just clean all this thermal paste off and then we can give it some new thermal paste. For these CPUs you generally have a little screw on the side just need to rotate it round till it clicks and then the CPU should just lift out. This one's got a piece of sticky on it but there you go so the CPU is now out and we'll swap it out for the i5. Now unlike a normal Intel CPUs, laptop Intel CPUs or at least back in these days when they weren't soldered on do have pins just like this normal AMD stuff. So you've got to be careful and double check that your pins are not bent and then you can just simply insert it back into the system. They also don't come with IHSs on them so you will need to put the thermal paste directly onto the dies themselves well, that's not a problem and once you turn the screw it should be locked into place the next thing we need to do is obviously install the ram and the ram that we've got are two sticks of samsung four gigabyte ddr3 to do that we just simply insert them at a slight angle click them into place drop them down and they should click in on those springs it's exactly the same as you would when you're removing or upgrading any kind of laptop the last upgrade that we need to make to this is obviously the hard drive so we'll get our hard drive out and we need to install it into this little caddy. Now the hard drive itself is going to go that way around and the caddy goes like that. So we need to pop that in just like that. Drop the hard drive down, slide it into place. And then we have a few places where we can put some tiny little screws. These ones will actually stop the caddy from moving around and it kind of finishes off the whole machine as well. Them ones will actually screw down just like that. Now that we've got all the upgrades done, the hard drive's done, the CPU's done, the memory's done, all we need to do is get the bottom put back on. Now to do that, we're just gonna slide that into place and then it just clicks down. We do need to get another screw for the middle just to keep this in place, but generally they clip down and everything's perfectly fine. But there you go. That is the full upgrade done. Of course, we've got one more thing to do, and that is to replace our little thumb pad in the middle of the keyboard. These are pretty simply just clicked on. You don't really need to do a lot else with it. It's got a square in the bottom of it, and there's a square pad there. So we just line it up and we push it down onto the thumb pad. And now that's it. Our system is fully upgraded and it is fully complete. All we need to do now is actually get the software installed. So now we've got our system hooked up to our capture device. It's going to come through this display here. It actually deactivates this when we start doing the capture, but hopefully we'll be able to record a little bit more for you when we actually start installing stuff. To install it, as I said before, you need a USB key and the piece of software that we've decided to use is a piece of software called Butter Zero. Now, I'm not exactly sure if I've actually pronounced that correctly, but it is a Linux based operating system that will actually emulate pretty much any games console that you can imagine. We have downloaded it and you have to download it from their website and then build a bit of an ISO style bootable drive onto a USB stick, which we've done on this one, and just insert it into the system. Now, when you're booting a laptop like this one, this one's a little bit weird because you do need to start mashing some buttons. So we'll turn the system on and then we'll start to mash the F12 key to get it to actually start to boot from a USB. 
Now after mashing the F12 button and getting it to boot from the USB drive, we are left with an operating system. But this is actually not installed to the laptop itself. It's installed to the USB stick and that's exactly where it's running from. So we do need a controller and for this I'm going to be using a PS4 controller. And we want to move that operating installation over to the hard drive. To do that, we just need to plug in our controller and we're going to be running it from USB because this laptop doesn't have a Bluetooth adapter. And then we can navigate around the system. Looking on the actual screen at the moment, in the current state it is, there are some free games that they provide on there. They're open source free games, so you can perfectly play them fine. One for the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advanced, and then some ports. But we don't want to be able to do that. We want to actually get there and install this into our SSD. So what we need to do is actually drop to the settings menu. And to do that, we're hitting the share button on the PS4 controller. It's going to be different on a controller if you use one. We'll go to system settings all the way down to a piece called storage device internal backup user data install on a new disk now going into there we should it takes a while because for some reason that well the laptop is a reasonably slow laptop and it's got to check for drives and things like that once we go in there we can literally just tell it to install itself onto the internal drive it will need a network to be able to do that otherwise it will throw up a complaint and you won't be able to do it so we'll get that installation done it does take quite a while on a system just like this it does say here so install on a new disk a network is required so that's what we were talking about when we said we network so we'll get a network installed and then we'll get it installed onto the internal drive i've been playing with this piece of software for a while now and I've actually managed to get it to do some really cool stuff. So we'll get on with that. And then when you see it next, it's gonna be in its new customized, really cool way. Now after a lengthy installation process, because this laptop is a pretty slow, it takes a long time because for some reason, I think it actually downloads again or re-downloads the operating system onto the actual SSD instead of just copying it from the USB. That's the only thing I can guess that it's doing because otherwise it could be super quick. And that might be the reason why it needs the internet connection. But we have the system running and I've been doing some super awesome configuration to it or customization to it. We have now got this system looking like the uh, PlayStation 4 dashboard. We've got all the consoles listed here and then we've got some all games listing or a favorite. I do have a couple of games on here that uh, I really do enjoy playing. But like I said before, I don't like to wear out the consoles because it really does actually uh, devalue them. If they actually break, I'm going to have to try and replace them again. I've got some really good consoles in really good condition, being that I collected them for a while. So we'll just show you some of the cool features of it. The music in the background of this is actually pretty cool. I'm not sure whether you guys can hear it, but it is the PlayStation 4 style music that's playing over the top of the dashboard. And I've done a lot of configuration on this to remove a lot of the gump around it. There was a lot of advertisements and things like that. Of course, to be able to put games on this, you do actually need a USB drive or something like that. Put the game on the drive, stick it into here. And if you hit F1 when you're on the menu system, you will get the original kind of Linux based file system and you can just drag and drop things in there in actual fact we had to do a lot of that when we did the customization because you need to drop in new files one of the coolest features of this and i thought it was actually pretty cool was the fact that we came up with our own startup splash screen Now, I thought that that was actually pretty cool that we could do that because it really does customize the system to us. Now, of course, we've got this going to this monitor at the moment and we're capturing it so you guys can see it. But if we just go to our favorites and try one of the games, we can see something that's really cool. Super Mario World, one of my uh, all time favorite classics. I remember growing up as a kid playing this, but we can just start this off. You can also customize your controllers. I've just left it as default for the PlayStation 4. And I'd be really cool to actually get some kind of Bluetooth dongle for this so that I can actually connect this up via Bluetooth. The system will do that, but as you can see, the game is actually running. We can go into a pre-existing save. And for anybody that's never played with emulators before, they can actually be pretty cool because they add a way more features than the original games did. We can actually save the status of any gameplay exactly where we are at any time. But if we go off to one of the uh, first levels of uh, Mario, you can see that things play pretty fine. It actually looks really cool and this is going to keep me entertained for ages. 
Now, as I said before, you will need to include the ROMs on here to be able to play the games. I'm not going to tell you where to get them from because that is not actually something you should be sharing around. But I do warn that you do need to own the games first to be able to do this. So this is a look at how we turned an old laptop that was going to be thrown away into a portable retro games console. If you've got anything like this, make sure you let me know in the comments or join our Discord server and share what work you've done in emulation. If you don't know anything about emulation, I'm not an absolute expert at it, but we do have people in our discord server that are pretty good at this kind of stuff so feel free again to jump into there and ask some questions and i'm sure somebody will help you don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and we'll catch you in the next one